Hey there, my name is Alexis Sorokin, I'm a staff writer at Kyiv Post and in case you were wondering what's going on in Ukraine but didn't have the time to read our extensive coverage both on our website and in print, I'm here to give you a short recap of last week's events. Let's start with a top comedian deciding to become a top politician. Showman Volodymyr Zelensky, a couple of minutes before midnight on New Year's Eve, announced that he's running for president. Yeah, I do. President Ukraine. Usually, this time is monopolized by Ukrainian presidents, with them delivering a New Year's speech, but the OnePlus One channel, owned by Ukrainian oligarch Igor Kolomoisky, showed Zelensky's address instead, with a fierce Facebook debate arising over whether it was appropriate, even though no official law states that the president must be shown at midnight. A couple of days ago, Zelensky asked the people to send him suggestions about what should be the key promises of his campaign and said that he will implement all of them. Oh, and it's probably worth mentioning that in the recent polls, Zelensky was in second place among the candidates. Another big news this week, and the week before, and the week before that, was Ukraine finally receiving Orthodox Church independence. The, ecumen <laughs> the ecumenical patriarch based in Istanbul signed a Thomas of Autocephaly or a decree of independence. For the past couple of months, Ukrainians have become Thomas experts. So hear what it actually means. The Ukrainian church has been under Moscow's jurisdiction since 1686, when under pressure from Russia it was transferred from the Constantinople church, the historic seat of the Eastern Orthodox Church, now known as Istanbul. However, after Ukraine regained its statehood, calls for there to be an independent, Ukrainian-based church arose. This dispute was largely under the radar, but after Russia's aggression against Ukraine, the situation has changed. The church in Istanbul, known in religious circles by its old name, the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, which is considered the first among equals in the Eastern Orthodox world, declared its intention to grant Ukrainians the much-desired independence. Then, 200 bishops and other church figures gathered in December in St. Sophia Cathedral in Kyiv to choose the head of the future autonomous Ukrainian church. Epiphanius was elected as the new metropolitan of all Ukraine and received the Thomas from Bartholomew, the patriarch of Constantinople. Priests loyal to Moscow, however, boycotted the Unification Council and remained loyal to the Russian Orthodox Church, which has strong ties to the Russian government. The creation of an Orthodox Church in Ukraine ends more than 300 years of dominance by the Moscow-based Church. That, concerning the ongoing war with Russia, is a big thing for many Ukrainians. Russian officials, of course, said that this is going to be the darkest day in Ukrainian history. Something less serious for dessert. A Ukrainian border guard tried to eat two $100 banknotes when the police tried to arrest the guy for allegedly taking a bribe. It didn't work as apparently the customs officer wasn't that hungry. The incident happened at the Luzhansk border crossing point between Ukraine and Hungary. Police say that the guard was accused of taking a thousand dollar bribe to turn a blind eye to the smuggling of cigarettes from Ukraine to the European Union. The chewed money was removed from his mouth and border guard was arrested. I can't imagine what would have happened if the alleged bribe was bigger. So this is all for this week, follow us on our YouTube channel and social media. Thank you for watching, see you next week. Ecumenical. 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 Ecumenical.